so let's get things quickly started. Um, so generally, I'm more of a back-end kind of guy. I don't dabble with too much of the front-end. Um, this kind of project uh, is something I did on the side. Um, just something that I hacked together because I kind of don't really like YouTube shorts. Or basically, I don't like short-form videos because, you know, because of the nature of it. Like, it's very addicting. Uh, you get you start one and then you are, then it's one hour later, kind of. So yeah, so this is not too much of a tech talk, but more of a rent peppered with tech talks. So my main goal is like that shelf. I don't want to see it as much uh, as much as I can. Like if I'm accessing YouTube website, like if I don't see the YouTube shorts shelf, then I'll be less tempted to like. Uh, I'd be less tempted to go down the YouTube shots kind of um, um, tunnel or whatever. So, um, if you want to follow along, uh, here is some code uh, of, of what I'm going to go through today, um, which is the building of the extension itself, which aims to kind of remove that shelf uh, whenever I'm like going through YouTube or whenever I'm using YouTube. Okay, so um, the starting point of, uh, of making extensions, right, is this link down here. So basically, thank thankfully, like, initially I assumed that the, uh, making extension, uh, Chrome extension is actually a, quite a difficult task, like, you know, um, in, uh, maybe involves like, a bit of um, uh, requirement to request for access, etc. But it's apparently it's relatively quite easy and it's kind of easy to get something running in your own browser you don't need any, any approval or anything so i'm going to show it right uh, right now so if you access the link the github link just now uh, it will show you this code and it's kind of the same as whatever uh, it's somewhat the same as whatever that is shown in this uh, page here so it basically it provides like what is needed to create a quick chrome extension project for how uh, for, for building one. So one file that's needed is the manifest.json file which basically describes um, what the extension does and uh, etc. And yeah, um, and then after that, if you go on in the further part of the documentation, um, let me show you the full documentation. Um, the one that actually applies more to us is we want to run some something in order to remove the YouTube shelf content. So, uh, there is this content scripts uh, key here, which basically um, does that. We, are, we, will, uh, we will reference like, okay, um, look at this content.js and um, run this JavaScript script to do your magic whenever you are on youtube.com slash results. So, on the, uh, my initial assumption about YouTube shorts was, I, I thought YouTube Shorts would be is a separate product on, from YouTube. I thought it would be like on a own subdomain or something. Apparently, it's not. It's on YouTube.com/shorts. So basically, I can't block it on a subdomain level. I can't use like slash etc slash host uh, on a computer to like block YouTube Shorts. So this is kind of why I have to go down the Chrome extension route. So um, let me go back to here. Uh, go back to the slides. Um, let me quickly show how it will look like uh, when uh, the thing is actually uh, actively on. So if you see the smiling imp on the corner there, I'm not sure whether you can see it, that smiling imp there. So basically that is the extension that's already installed. So it's YouTube Shorts uh, cleanup. I'll go through the code later, but I will show you like what it's actually do, uh, what it will actually do. So, um, as I mentioned just now, it only applies it to um, the youtube.com slash search. So, what I need to do is like, usually on the front page, you won't see shots that much. But let's say if you go to Korean, like, you know, let's say you do a search for Korean food, and then um, for some odd reason, I can't get it working properly for the first time load. So, usually I, uh, only on the second time load, then like stuff starts to happen. So if you see just now, basically that's what the Chrome extension does. It detects for the um, 
short shelf that appears and then basically that, you get, uh, that gets removed. So if you continue scrolling, if you see another shelf, let's see if you see another shelf, maybe there won't be any more. Ah, uh, here. Okay, yeah, so basically that is kind of how it works. Okay, um, let's go through what is, at, what is actually happening. So for the YouTube shots, right, um, is something the, that, that shelf that you see on that search page, it does not appear on first initial load, unfortunately. If not, right, uh, what I have done is just find the class and just remove the class. So basically my code could, could just have been like this a.remove. Copy this. If it was just that simple, right, then um, I could have just done like this. Like find the class and then remove that class. And this would be enough to remove something or remove a DOM element from the uh, page. But apparently the unfortunate thing is YouTube is a very, very, very dynamic website. Uh, stuff keeps popping in and out. And as you see just now, as, uh, it has that infinite scroll thing so YouTube shelf can kind of appear after a while. So we kind of need to do a whole bunch of Java, uh, JavaScript magic to kind of detect that and remove it. So this is the whole kind of uh, JavaScript to kind of handle that. And the one thing to kind of, um, the one thing to kind of help to trigger that uh, code to remove it is this, um, we need to add event listeners. So I'm not too sure how this uh, event listener is, of course I don't code in JavaScript mostly. Um, it just, um, from what I see, uh, what, uh, what I needed to detect is when the DOM changes, it should trigger an event and that should trigger the func uh, this function here to remove the stuff. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's go back to the slides. Okay. Um, okay. So a few things that um, for the developing the uh, Chrome extension. So just now when you see the Chrome extension, uh, let's say once you develop the code, like how do you get it into your own browser? Uh, because this whatever I built so far, um, I don't intend to publish it in a sense because at the end of the day, approval for publishing of extensions still go kind of go through Google. I don't think Google will ever approve this in a sense. So yeah, uh, that's kind of why I'm not going to go bother going down that route. So if you go to Chrome browser, and then you go to Chrome extensions, um, apparently there's this thing called develop mode or something. You turn it on, and then now you can have a whole bunch of buttons which allows you to um, load up extensions. So if you click on load, unpack, then basically from here you just select the folder, and then you will um, load up the extension code that you write. So far, any questions? So this is all free or the developer has to be free to pay to get this developer? Oh, free. All free of charge. Yeah. So you can make your own extensions however much you want. Um, the only part is publishing it to the Chrome Web Store. Like if you want to uh, let the rest of the world use whatever you built. Yeah. But if you are just using it for yourself, yeah, apparently, yeah, you can just do this uh, off, off, off the thing. So, so this is based on the, what you receive from the, from the whatever feed? Ah, uh, yes. You have a list of all the objects that are rendered, and in your case, you find those videos and you basically delete them. Yes, um, so basically, whatever thing that you want to do, you need to kind of know the quirks of the website that you're working with. So in the case of YouTube, it takes a few milliseconds for certain things to be rendered in. Uh, because you know now front-end magic is really quite brutal. Like they do all kinds of, they add new elements as time goes on. Like it, it takes a while for data to come in. And once the data come in, it renders out new entire DOM trees, etc. So that's kind of why you need to have some kind of like timer to let the page settle before you do your actions. Yeah, so, but it depends on the quotes of the website. If your the website is more static in nature, then yeah, the the whatever code that you write can be more simplistic. Yeah. So, so if I want an extension that I know exactly where, which website I go to, and 
for that, I want my mouse to click or have specific action. Is is a, a Chrome extension the right tool or? Uh, from what I read just now is uh, the other tool called Sele Selenium uh, and it seems to be this has functionality that you can it's really applied to the feed or can it be something that, that detects an image let's say uh, you know like a PDF and then every time I go here I, I will click and instead of asking my password which I always have to enter somewhere you, an extension can actually do all that? I mean, an extension, it's possible to program that. It's just that like the, the, the user experience will find it kind of weird where the moment you go to the web, okay, let's say you okay, create the extension to do that. Um, you go to the website and then suddenly the mouse start hopping around. That's like kind of a weird experience in a sense. That's for me to automate things, that's it. It's possible, it's possible, but yeah. I uh, can't really, can't really comment much in a sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so up, um, I covered turn on upload. Um, okay. So in the case where there happens to be errors, right? Let me see whether there is. Okay. So if there happens to be errors, um, there's two places to debug when it comes to Chrome extensions. One is there's this errors button here. Um, it will show the list of errors that the extension has faced. Uh, alternatively, uh, you can go down to the, um, you can add like console.info here, and it will still show itself at the network. Uh, where am I? Uh, here, if you go to more tools, if you go to developer tools, whatever that we say on uh, console.info, um, it will appear in this console log. So it kind of gives you that area of the debug. Okay, let me see what else is there to cover. Yeah, okay, then that's kind of it. That's mostly it for the demo. Um, okay, so just now whatever I, I shown is just only to basically remove YouTube shots, but of course um, with extensions, there's other things that can be removed as well, like, you know, what I kind of wanted to do with this project, but I have no time to build it in time for today was uh, remove videos under one minute, remove videos with, uh, containing the word reacting. And also like, you know, uh, I'm not sure if anybody likes YouTube feed to have like spoilers on their front page. I kind of, I don't like that as well. So uh, I kind of want to have that built one day. Yeah, and this kind of videos, um, this video was a curse. Um, I clicked it once and my feed had seven out of eight of the videos showing this. I don't know why. I don't know why this was so popular then. So I'm not sure how, I mean, Chrome extension is possible to solve this, but I'm not sure how at the moment. Because the title's strange and it's just that image is just kind of irritating to look at right now. Um, so for references, uh, whatever I covered today, uh, the code for the talk, um, how to start Chrome extensions, uh, and whatever I'm mentioning today, um, the blog version of it is down there. So it provides a deeper explanation of um, of why yeah why I did this and how it's done and etc. So yeah, uh, any further questions? I think I think we can take one last question. All good. <laughs>